we're going to work on your downswing. Specifically, we're going to work on turning your body without any arm involvement. I want you to take your small pipe, put it across your chest. We're going to stand straight up for this drill. We're not going to introduce any angles. Just put it across your chest, and like the previous drill, turn to your trail side. Now I want you to turn to your lead side. And that's the movement. It's turn, turn. Turn away from the target. Turn toward the target like you do on the downswing. The focus here is learning to turn with your body and leave your arms out of it. It's turn, turn. Turn to your trail side, turn to your lead side. Don't worry about anything like sequencing or what's supposed to turn first. The idea here is just to learn to use your body to make the turn, not your arms. Okay, let's do the exercises. And remember, we're gonna do 100 and as always, hang around for the whole 100 because I'm gonna be handing out tips as we're doing the exercise. Let's get started. Just line up your feet comfortably shoulder width and turn. One. Two. Three, four, five, five is our count. Remember to take a break every five repetitions. You learn more when you do a few and then take a break and then do a few more than just trying to drive through all 100. One. Two. Three. Four, five. So I'm sure you've figured out this is a great exercise for loosening up and stretching your back. So even after you do this for the exercise, I would keep on doing it just every day or every other day just to stretch the back out. You'll find you'll have more movement if you stretch your back out over time than you do if you don't do any stretching. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Now try to make this these smooth movements, not real jerky ones as you're turning toward the front, or two-part movements, just a nice smooth movement from the back to the front. One. Two, three, four, five. Now, as always, if you feel any pain or uncomfort in your back, stop, take a break. It is easy to overdo it with these pipes, particularly when you're doing these big stretches. So 
be careful. We don't want anybody getting injured. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And as always, we want to let your head rotate with the movement in both directions. We're not keeping our eye on the ball at this point. In fact, I've got a lesson coming up that's called keep your eye off the ball. Let's try turning to the side here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Of course, this is not a race. You don't have to see how fast you can turn or how fast you can do these. It's just a comfortable, slow turn. We're working our core turning memory. We're not trying to build muscle or speed at this point. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. When you come back to the front, I want you to stop. This is not a back, forth, back, forth, back, forth drill. It's a back, forward. So when you come, after you've done with the drill, come back to the front and stop and then start the next turn. One. Two. Three. Four, five. Keep your feet flat on the ground. I don't want your feet coming up on the turns, either the back turn, your heel coming up, either on the back turn or the forward turn. Just feet flat on the ground the entire way through. One, two, three, four, five. And also, I want you to keep the pipe, make sure it stays next to your chest. When you're turning, I don't want it coming out like this or coming off your chest. Just keep it tight against your chest. Now, one danger of that, though, you've got to be careful. If you're turning hard and holding it on your chest, that momentum, because of the weight of the club can, or the pipe, can pull your body farther than it can actually turn. So in that case, yeah let the pipe roll away from you. But since we're doing this slow and easy, keep it on your chest and turn. If the pipe's pulling off your chest like that, because you're turning too hard and too quickly. This is a slow, easy move. One. 
two. Three. Four. Five. That's 50. So we're halfway through. You should start tiring a little bit. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. As well as keeping your feet flat on the ground, I mean, don't, you, there's no need even to rotate up. We're not shifting our weight in these turns either or from one foot to the other. We'll get to that in a different exercise. Right now, it's just turning your core, really turning what they say called turning in a bucket. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, about this time, your body should start tiring a little bit which means it's gonna to try to help you make a more efficient move. So I want you to listen to your body at this point and start understanding what does your body turn first? Is it your shoulders, your hips, your feet, or some, your knees, feet, or something in between? Your body will teach you how to make a turn. You don't have to micromanage it. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're not pushing off with our feet at this point uh, deliberately. But again, listen to your body. Uh, your body may have you doing a little shuffling with your feet, may put, may be pushing one foot forward, the other backwards to make the turn, but just be aware of what your body is doing. One. Two. Three, four, five. Let's just use an odd angle here, see what we get. One. Two, three, four, five. Now 
Now, I'm not a big fan of trying to sequence your moves in the turn because, again, I think your body will teach you the most efficient motion. So don't be thinking, oh, turn hips first and let the shoulders lag or turn shoulders first. Just let your body teach you now that it's starting to tire. Let your body teach you the most efficient way to turn. One, two, three, four, five. Now, as always, I know making these micro movements can be boring, uh, but when you make them, they build up upon each other. When you break them down into the small pieces like this, you learn them more thoroughly. One. Two. Three, four, five, only ten more to go. See, it really doesn't take that long to do these exercises. One, two, three, four, five, ninety five, almost there. One, two, three, four, five, and that's 100. See, it doesn't take that long. But if you do get tired, you can always take a break. You know, do 25, 25, 25, 25, take a break, or even take a break between any five. Even taking the breaks, they don't take that long, or you can split them up among days. The idea is to not to injure yourself, but is to learn the routine. And ideally, you will learn more, actually, if you split them across days. I hate to say so, but it's true. Because, you know, when you take a break between learning, Particularly if you sleep on it and do it again the next day, you're going to pick up more than if you just rush through it and move on to something else. <laughs>